Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very unusual yet somewhat terrifying question of when will the universe end and what exactly will happen when all of these beautiful stars that we're flying through currently using space engine will actually disappear and become nothing. In today's video you're going to find out what may actually occur when all of this disappears and becomes complete darkness. Welcome to What The Math. Now you may have already heard, but if you still haven't, the universe is unfortunately dying. Let's fly through it and let's check out what we're going to be missing out on in the next few trillion, 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 trillion years. Basically it's going to take a while, but at some point all of this beautiful stuff that you see is going to disappear. Now in this video I wanted to explore this idea because we know today that especially because of things like dark energy, the universe one day will most likely kind of sort of disappear or just become a very sort of empty space. Now we're not exactly sure um, when this is going to happen just yet because we're not entirely sure about some certain subatomic particles and when they disappear, but we know that uh, at some point none of this will actually be there anymore. At some point all of this will disintegrate and turn into complete and utter darkness filled with, um, well, pretty much nothing. Now how long will this take? Well, let's actually discuss this a little, a little bit more detail using Universe Sandbox 2 because unfortunately Space Engine doesn't really show us the actual limit of space-time and when things basically disappear completely. So let's go into the Universe Sandbox and find out. Now we've already previously talked about how long uh, our solar system will last and basically what will happen to it um, when the sun actually starts dying, becomes really 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 big, covers a lot of this area and then turns into a white dwarf. But we're actually going to go a little bit further than that. We're actually going to talk about not only the end of you know the solar system and not only the end of our beautiful galaxy, the Milky Way, but basically the end of everything in the universe. And all of this is going to be based on um, what we currently know about um, various particles and what we know about things like black holes and uh, white dwarfs and other things that might actually survive a little bit longer than usual. Now, first of all, let's actually talk about how we all know all of this. And what we know about the galaxy is usually um, based on the observation of other stars and other galaxies and other things in the outer uh, galactic system and we've actually studied something like 200,000 galaxies and found that many of them, specifically um, quite a lot of them, had lost half of their energy in the first two billion years of their life. Basically a lot of these galaxies have actually lost a lot of energy. And having studied uh, various um, types of wavelengths, uh, radiation, specifically ultraviolet, infrared and x-rays and all that other stuff, uh, the various uh, studies discovered that not only did uh, most galaxies uh, lose quite a lot of energy, but also most of them, if not all of them, started to produce a lot less stars as well. So a lot more stars were produced back um, closer to the beginning of the universe than uh, there are now. So the majority of galaxies nowadays do not produce as many new stars. And with time, even the Milky Way will eventually stop producing stars and a lot of these current stars will kind of do this. They'll either fly away into the outer galactic system or they will kind of turn into very, very dark uh, black dwarfs or maybe remain as white dwarfs as well. And so first, uh, what will actually happen is obviously our um, sun will actually start dying, then we'll experience the so-called collision with Andromeda galaxy in about um, three or so billion years. Um, then our sun will actually kind of finally die and turn into white dwarf after the collision with the um, Andromeda galaxy. We don't really know what's going to happen to our actual galaxy after the collision. Maybe they'll turn into one, maybe they'll just kind of fly apart and become smaller galaxies. But chances are they'll, they're going to become one large galaxy. But later on with years, as many stars start dying and disappearing and as the actual universe expands because of the dark energy, it will continue to start expanding more and more and more. It will start stretching um, various galaxies apart. Many galaxies will start sort of um, moving farther and farther apart from each other. And there will be time when basically all of the space will look very, very, very spacey, it will look very, very empty. 
And this will take close to about a trillion years. And after about two trillion years, the last of the stars will finally be born. And after that period, no more stars will actually be made at all. So it would actually take two trillion years, which is basically two followed by this many zeros that you see on the screen right now, for um, no more stars to be born, for all of the galaxies to start slowly getting darker and darker and basically turning into either white dwarfs, uh, black dwarfs, uh, or galaxies con con um, consisting of black dwarfs and white dwarfs, and of course things like a lot of, a lot of uh, black holes that you see right here in the center of this spinny galaxy. Now let's actually take a look at maybe this as well because this kind of kind of gives us a better idea of what uh, some galaxies look like because this also includes a lot of dark matter here and there's actually two galaxies here. Uh, now we don't really know what's going to happen to dark matter because we don't really know what it is to begin with um, but it might stay here, it might actually disappear. Either way though, most of these galaxies after about 100 trillion years, which is 100 followed by the same amount of zeros, will essentially be filled with nothing but black dwarfs, white dwarfs, and black holes. It will take about 100 trillion years for all of the stars that we currently know as main sequence stars, like our sun, or suns near us, or stars near us, um, all of them to turn into nothing but essentially white dwarfs like Sirius B, black holes like this tiny black hole that you see right here that's only about one mass of sun, and uh, a few neutron stars here and there, um, pulsars, and a few other objects that actually usually live a little bit longer or I guess last a little bit longer than um, normal stars, but uh, even all of these objects will eventually start disappearing. So after 100 trillion years, we'll basically see most of these. There will also be these uh, so-called black dwarfs that don't actually exist yet, and if you actually wanted to see a black dwarf, this is what it looks like. You have to just look up this supernova close-up in real time. This is a pretty good example of what a black dwarf will look like and what these black dwarfs will be. Unfortunately, this is actually not particularly realistic because it's also going supernova. But actual black dwarfs will stay black for a very, very long time until they completely dis dissipate into nothingness and disappear. And this particular era is going to be known as the Degenerate Era. So this starts at about 100 trillion years. Um, and uh, this will essentially be uh, a combination of these uh, four objects. There are possibly a few more objects, but there's a black hole right here. You may actually not see it because it's really black. There's a black dwarf, then there is a pulsar uh, right next to it. And there's also somewhere out there, there's also a white dwarf that I may have forgotten to put. Oh, never mind, it's actually, this is the white dwarf, and this tiny thing right there, that's, that right there is a neutron star. So that's essentially what's going to be at the end of um, the universal age, the so-called Stelliferous era, which is basically when stars are still being produced, and uh, this is going to be um, the main sort of degenerate era. Now, we don't really know what's going to happen to other things, like, obviously, um, antimatter, dark matter, uh, because... Like, once again, we don't know enough about it, but it might still be around too. But even this is not the end yet. Um, after countless of various interactions, even these objects will eventually start disappearing and basically um, kind of um, start either disintegrating or completely disappear from existence. So, for example, things like um, white dwarfs will eventually cool down, become black dwarfs, and black dwarfs will eventually dissipate into empty particles, and those particles will eventually actually disintegrate into subatomic particles, which will then also disintegrate at some point as well. This will obviously take quite a long time, but it will happen. Things like black holes will also disappear using so-called Hawkins radiation. All of them will lose mass and with many, many, many trillions of years, will become absolutely nothing. They'll actually completely disintegrate into just radiation. And most of the other solid objects, like uh, any kind of um, star that contains materials, will also um, start disappearing through so-called quantum tunneling, and basically any solid object will eventually leak atoms, they'll actually leave the object, and the object will start decreasing in size, it will become smaller, and smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually disappear completely. So even Sirius B, which is already a white dwarf, will at some point basically kind of, uh, even though it's growing right now, it's actually going to become smaller and smaller and one day just uh, turn into some sort of a very interesting object. Let's see what happens actually. Is it going to become a gas giant? Oh yes, it has become a gas giant. And then it's going to become smaller and smaller and smaller again. And this uh, gas giant of Sirius B is also going to turn into some sort of a planetary body that you're about to see any second now. And even then, 
it will still keep uh, disintegrating more and more and more. And all of this will be happening in complete darkness because there will be almost no light coming out of no anywhere. And at some point, there will actually be like nothing left. Uh, there will be only these uh, fundamental particles that I guess I'm kind of representing with this supernova here, just flying around and you won't really see anything else except for these fundamental particles after about something like 10 to the power of 34 years, which is 10 followed by 34 zeros. This is when uh, all of these um, fundamental particles will still be kind of around, but even they will start disappearing. As a matter of fact, all of the neutron stars will start breaking up, all of the pulsars will start breaking up, and within about 10 to the power of 40 years, most of these um, particles, including protons, electrons, um, and possibly even neutrons, will actually also break up into even smaller particles, and then this is when the entire universe is going to become this mushy thing of pretty much uh, almost nothing in it. And at this point, the universe has actually stretched so much that most of these particles are way too far away to interact with one another. And basically, there's just complete darkness everywhere. And within about 10 to the power of 100 years, which is 10 followed by 100 zeros, uh, this is when uh, essentially nothing but um, just subatomic particles remain. No, any kind of molecules, nothing really um, is uh, around. And... It's mostly just uh, the remaining photons from years, years ago, and possibly some really, really, really weak subatomic particles that still remains. Now, what happens after that is kind of hard to actually estimate, but the scientists think that because the space-time actually expands, and let's actually just use another supernova for this, because the space-time actually does expand, it basically sort of always accelerating in its expansion, and we just think of this as space-time, um, it will eventually become so thin that even the subatomic particles will be completely destroyed, they'll be just pulled apart, and then nothing will stay there, and maybe the entire universe will kind of just pop. Or maybe not, we don't really know if this is exactly what's going to happen, but... What's really clear to us is that uh, the universe is definitely not getting any um, any more life in the sense that it is actually decreasing in the amount of stars, it's decreasing in the, in the amount of materials that is familiar to us, and it's essentially dying, it's becoming older and older and older. And at some point, all of these subatomic articles will be all that remains, and even they will very likely just become completely disintegrated and disappear from existence. Now, most of the scientists today think that this is maybe the end of the universe, but obviously it's not a true end because the space-time still exists. Space-time has not really ripped apart and um, we don't really know what's going to happen after that. But that's basically our current understanding and current knowledge of what will happen to the universe in something like 10 to the power of 100 years and what will basically occur when all of the particles disappear. Other than that, we don't really know much else about either the universe ending or whether it will actually then decide to reverse its course and uh, create some kind of a new Big Bang. For all we know, maybe that's exactly what happens every few trillion, 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 trillion years. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about our universe and of course our own galaxy and all of the stars and all of the matter in it. And if you've learned a lot from this video, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this video with your friends who may enjoy watching this video as well. I'll see you guys in the next video when we're going to talk about something else educational using space uh, sciences or maybe something completely different and mathematical or scientific. We'll definitely be using video games, that's for sure. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. And as always, game you later. Bye-bye. And let's actually see what it looks like from the inside of this beautiful galaxy as it's been f ripped apart by various forces because it actually doesn't have any dark matter controlling the situation here. So without dark matter, this galaxy will actually fall apart.